If you've ever had knee pain when you squat or back pain when you deadlift or you just can't add any more pounds to your bench press, we're gonna fix all that in today's episode, so stay tuned. Okay, you ready to get right into this? We, we got a lot are. to cover. Yeah, we do have a lot to cover. Right. We're going to go through the back squat, the deadlift, the press, and the strict press. And we're going to give you guys, you know, what is the most common problem that we see? Yes. And um, what is the reason that this is a problem? Right. What's a fix for it? Yep. We're going to give you a bonus tip. And then we're going to actually cover one thing that we think is like often missed, like by other coaches yeah. sometimes we, you know, I, I've coached a lot of people and I've coached a lot of people who've been coached. And a lot of times when I point out these little bitty tidbit things are like, Whoa, no one's ever told me <laughs> right. that. So those are like the things we're going to go through for each lift. And the reason we pick these four things is because these are movements that we include in our programming every single week in some yeah. variation. And they really should be part of anybody's uh, program. If one of their goals is to get stronger, build muscle and look more athletic. A lot and, of people sleep on these things, but they're super, super important to do and to do right. Yeah. And these things matter. Number one, to be safe yes. and number two, to, to like, you know, have the most effective lift that yes. you can. And that's no, what you're ain't doing nobody it. trying to get hurt and ain't nobody trying to waste time. So yeah. let's get right into it. All right. Okay. The back squat. Number one, what is the goal of a back squat? It's to move a weight that's resting on your back from a standing position all the way down into the bottom of a squat where your knees and your hips are fully flexed and then go back to standing. A fully executed back squat is one where at the bottom of the squat, your thighs, your femurs mm -hmm. are parallel or just below parallel to the ground. And this is a full body exercise that might sound like just a leg exercise, but it's working every single muscle of your body, especially as you challenge yourself with heavier weights. So yeah. that's the goal of a back squat. All right. So the most common problem that we see in a back squat is toes forward. And this is actually across the board for any type of squat, whether we're just doing an air squat, a goblet squat, or a, bar a back squat with barbell on your back, is just setting up with those toes forward. And the reason that this is a problem is it creates you doing a knees forward squat. I'm gonna be like trying to demonstrate <laughs> these right here. I'll, I'll try to hold off. Versus a hips back squat. Mm -hmm. And this is gonna put way too much pressure on our knees. It doesn't allow the depth. You know, the back squat is working your posterior chain and your quads. And if we squat shallow, if we squat with our knees forward, the pressure just go into our knees. And that's not, that's not where we want to put it. And that's not what we're trying to work when we squat. Mm -hmm. um, so the fix for this is we, um, when we take our stance, we're going to take our stance with our feet shoulder width apart. Like when we're in the, in the exercise world, we have two stances. We have one that's hip width and one that's shoulder width. And when we say hip width or shoulder width, we're talking about where your heels are in relation to that part of your body. So right. think about where your hips are, where's your heels in relation to your hips. And then think about where your shoulders are. That's a little bit wider mm -hmm. than your hips. So that's going to be your wider stance. Yeah. And what this is going to be with your toes, just slightly pointed out about 30 degrees. And this is going to vary, you know, person to person, but that's just, just general rules of thumb. And we're going to descend by sending our hips back, just reaching back like, a lot, you know, if someone's having trouble with a squat, I'll often have them reach back like they're reaching for a bench or a chair. Yep. And that's going to kind of fix this problem. And having those toes out at about 30 degrees allows your knees to track outward instead mm -hmm. of just forward. Okay, so um, here's a little bonus yeah. tip. There's really two different ways you can set up a back squat. There's one called the high bar and one called the low bar. It basically changes not only where the bar is sitting, but the musculature that's primarily involved in the squat. I think that's is, this is also a common thing is like people just place the bar on their back without any, without knowing what do they squat high bar, low bar. So quickly tell them what is where high bar sits and where low bar sits. Yeah. So high, tell the difference. High bar is really like the default uncoached squat. If you tell somebody to squat, they're going to go put the bar up on the top of their traps, really close to the top of their cervical spine or the bottom of their cervical spine. That's just going to be the default for most mm -hmm. people up on the traps. That's the high bar position. But it also is beneficial if you're trying to work more quad strength. A I was going to get there. Okay. I was going to get there. So the high bar squat. <laughs> it's not just uncoached. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the high bar squat causes you to keep your back more upright 
to keep yourself from tipping mm -hmm. over and because you're in that, that more upright position using less of your glutes and more of your quads. When you move the bar down lower on your back, it's going to cause you to bend over more to keep the bar centered over the middle of your foot as you squat. And in that more bent over position, you engage more glutes, hamstrings, adductors, all those giant muscles of the posterior chain. Okay. So that's the main difference. Yeah. All right. Um, so we actually have a full video we can link to that tells you like, what is the difference and what do they look like on the high bar and low bar? And I do think that like, that's a good piece for you to, you know, if you've never really thought about it to, to like review both and, and a lot of, a lot of it depends on your body type. Yeah. And so just, just review both of them for yourself with just the barbell and see which one you like better. Sounds good. All right. Often overlooked. I see this on all kinds of squats from air squats to barbell squats. And it is overextending at the top of the rep, meaning like you pop your hips and your pelvis forward when you're standing mm -hmm. up straight. And especially with a loaded weight, yeah. whether we're holding a goblet or we got, you know, 250 pounds on our back, we don't want to put our back in any kind of compromised position. And that includes overextending by putting your, basically pushing your belly forward. Yep. <laughs> um, it puts a ton of pressure on the low back. And so people do this because they get into a rhythm of squatting. Mm -hmm. They're like up, they're down, like, up, down, almost like they're listening to like a song <laughs> and they just like pop their hips forward. Yeah. And so it, you can really, it's just like the easiest fix is just telling people they do it and they're like, Oh, I didn't realize I did that. Right. And then they can usually people can fix it right away. Yep. Love that one. That's a great tip. Okay, let's move on to the deadlift. What is a deadlift? It's when we move a weight from a dead stop all the way from the floor up to where we're standing fully upright with the weight with the weight at our hips if we're talking about moving a barbell up and down. And of course, just like a back squat, maybe this is even more of a full body exercise because of the way that you're holding the weight in your hands, but this is going to recruit every single muscle in your body, including the ones you can't see, like in your inner trunk to help you stabilize mm -hmm. the spinal erectors to keep your back in extension. Terrific exercise for building full body strength. And if you have aesthetic goals and you're not deadlifting and you start deadlifting, you should expect to see just improvement across the board in your muscle growth because of the hormonal response that happens when you lift heavy deadlifts. So that's right. why we do deadlifts. All right. The biggest problem that we see in the deadlift is dropping your hips after the setup or just squatting down to the bar to get the, to get your grip. Yeah. So that's like a really low hip, almost like a squatted position to get the bar. Um, the reason that this is a problem is in this squatty position, we're actually squatting the barbell up. So it's just like hmm. a second squat versus deadlifting the bar. And like he was saying, the deadlift is our biggest lift. It works our biggest muscle group, which is our posterior chain, everything on the backside your glutes, your hamstrings. Um, and that's what we're trying to work when we're trying to, when we're doing a deadlift. And so if we squat down, we're not fully working our posterior chain. Um, and, and another reason that this is a problem is that, you know, when we're lifting a very heavy weight, we want to keep this bar like right in line with our body and literally dragging up our legs. And so if we're squatted down, our knees are pushing forward and our knees are blocking the bar path. Mm -hmm. And so to overcome this, we either have to like shoot our hips up really fast, or we have to like bring the bar around our knees, creating a very inefficient and unsafe bar yeah. path for us. Um, so the it's, fix. It, it's almost like when you see somebody squat down, it's not almost like, it is like when you see somebody squat down to get their grip and their knees are out yeah. in front of the, the bar, I automatically know what's about to happen yeah. because you're just, you're, it ain't going to work right. <laughs> in that setup. So, something that's not good is going to have to happen for you to get that bar to a standing position. And, and most commonly when we see people do this squatty deadlift, rep one is squatty, rep two through whatever are great. <laughs> it's so true. And it's, so it's all in the setup. And yep. you know, not only does this is, is an inefficient setup, it's not properly working the posterior chain, but you know, we're, we're like, we're going from a dead stop on the ground for a very heavy weight and we don't want to like jerk this weight up. Mm -hmm. And so like, it's, it's a horrible, it's a horrible name, but they call it a stripper deadlift because you're squatted down and you like raise your butt up first and then you deadlift, but it creates this like jerk onto the bar yeah. and we don't want to do that. We want to literally like squeeze the bar off of the ground Push the with our away. hips and shoulders moving at the same time. Yeah. It creates so a jerk on the bar and creates a jerk on your back too. Yeah. Yeah. So we're just trying you know, we're trying to be as safe as possible. So once you go through the, there's a great fix for this, the five step deadlift setup. Yeah. And I don't know if we were going to say this later, but we created an entire resource dedicated 
to nailing the perfect deadlift yeah. every single oh, yeah, time. Just, so so. Uh, I will put a link to that in the show notes. It's called the deadlift guide, perfect deadlift the ultimate guide. Deadlift, yeah, the ultimate deadlift guide. Right. <clears throat> Way more than you ever knew, or maybe even wanted <laughs> to know about deadlifts, but yeah, we'll uh, fix you up with that. Okay. But here's the five step process that we teach for getting set up for the perfect deadlift. All right. First step one, we're going to stand with our shins one inch from the bar. In most people, that's going to mean the bar is right over the shoe, the tied knot of your shoelaces, but one inch from the bar, you're good to go. Step two, we're going to take our grip just outside of our shins with straight arms and straight legs. That's the part people mess straight up. Straight legs, straight legs, not bent legs, you not, not feeling, squatting down. You should be yeah. feeling a stretch in your hamstrings at this point because right. your legs are straight and you're bent over. Step three, now you can bend your knees and bring your shins to the bar, but don't let the bar roll forward and don't drop your hips yet. And don't, yeah, don't draw, don't roll the bar towards you. Yeah. Don't move the bar at all. Bar doesn't move in the entire setup. Otherwise we've just negated everything we did mm -hmm. and trying to get in the right position. Okay. Step number four, we're going to flatten our back, both upper and lower by pushing our stomach down into the ground, pulling our shoulders back. And by pushing, by pulling our chest forward, like we're spreading out like mm -hmm. Superman, that's going to flatten both our upper and lower back at the same time. Keep in mind, we're still not rolling the bar and we're still not lowering our hips. Everything was already set up right there. So we're mm -hmm. going to leave everything alone. And then step five is to fill our stomach with air, not our chest, but our stomach brace that all the muscles of the stomach close off our throat. So all the air and the inner abdominal pressure that we've created stays intact and then we're going to pull the bar right up in contact with our shins until we're in a fully standing position yeah the perfect deadlift i mean and, and this takes this takes a little practice and i think a lot of times people like clients will get frustrated with this that we're just like harping on this deadlift setup but if you take the time to like learn it it doesn't take that long to learn it, but if you really think through the steps and learn it, we have tons of videos on it. You never have to think about your deadlift yeah. setup again. You walk up to the bar. You don't have to go through the process. It feels like, oh my gosh, I'm not going to take this long to deadlift every time. It won't take you that long. I mean, and the point of this is when people don't have a proper deadlift setup, they walk up to the bar, they're moving it around. They got their, they got their leaned over. They're not sure about where everything is. And it takes so long. And I'm like, you're wearing your hamstrings yeah. out. You're wearing yourself out and you're not, you don't have confidence. Yeah. So if you can nail this thing down it, it takes like seconds yeah like three seconds and once maybe. you know it then you yeah. are free to build strength because free you're confident strength. in your setup and even if you approach the bar for a clean if you you know you're yeah. gonna pick up anything like you will know how to do this and the key to these to this setup is in those first three steps is where is how far you stand from the bar number one get that down you know about one inch from your shins i'd say like stand with the bar right over the knot in your shoelaces that usually works for most people and it's like a visual and then the second one is to get your grip with straight legs. So no rolling the bar, no bending your knees at this point, and mm -hmm. then bringing your shins to the bar without moving the bar or anything else. Your hips are going to feel high, but that's the point of this is yeah. because before we were squatting down. So if you can nail steps one, two, and three, and then of course, you know, get your bracing down and steps four and five, you've got it. Yep. We have, we've fixed many a deadlift <laughs> by going over this. For sure. All right. Bonus. Bonus tip. Okay. The lift is not over until the weight is back on the ground yeah. safely. So oh. we don't want to just let all of our, all of the tension that we've built up and the safety we built up, just let it go and then let the bar go back down and risk, you know, the bar getting out in front of us or that weight being on our back when it's not in a safe position. Basically what we're saying is like, I, we, some, we often see like someone do a great setup and a perfect set. They're so, you know, they're so excited. They're, they're fatigued and then they give it up when the weight, they're still holding the weight and they do a sloppy bent over rounding the back for that last right. rep to put the weights on the ground. And we don't want to see that. The, the lift is not over until you, the weights are on the ground and you can just let go and walk away. Right. All right. The thing often missed, and this is, is fixed by the five step setup, but it's also like, to me, it's a double check for mm -hmm. your setup. Check your shin angle. Your so shin look angle. Down, what does that mean? Look down at your shins. Are your shins fairly vertical? Which mm -hmm. means, okay, my hips are probably high. If my shins are fairly vertical, are my shins leaning forward and my knees blocking yep. the barbell? If that's what it looks like, then my hips are probably too low and I'm not going to really have an efficient bar pass. Yeah. So if you think you're going through the five step setup, then you look down at your shins and your shins are pointing, your knees are pointing forward and your, and your knees are blocking the barbell reset, try yeah. it again, or Could simply, I, simply straighten out those shins. They're fairly vertical, not completely, but fairly vertical. Yeah. 
way more than most people think. And if you think about that bar path, I mean, that just makes sense. Like the bar is the, you know, the barbells over your, over the laces in your toes and it needs to come straight up your body. The laces in your toes. The laces in your shoes. <laughs> if we are, if we have, you know, our shins blocking the bar, where's it going to go? Yeah. It's going to go out in front of us. Mm -hmm. And then let me just throw one other little thing in here that sure. most coaches miss. I feel like they miss that a lot of people uh, set up with a really wide deadlift stance. Maybe yeah. they've seen it on the world's strongest man where these guys are like six, <laughs> six, six, six feet tall. Or yeah. like if, if you're really tall, you have to widen your stance a little bit. But for most people standing with your heels, only like eight inches apart, which is pretty much the distance between your pinky and your thumb when you're in this like which is hook, crazy, hook, yeah. hook em horns First time you do it <laughs> pose right here uh, that's about right having your heels about that close together with the toes with slightly your toes pointed, pointed out just out a little yeah. bit yeah and that what that does is just really creates that nice tight bar path to the body right yeah that that's a good one the um the really wide stance yeah thanks so, thanks for uh, saying that was good <laughs> So we were talking earlier about the two stances, we were, the shoulder width stance for the squat and the deadlift, we want the hip width stance yeah. and you can, it's, there's a cool trick. You can just hop up and down a few times because like I said, by, by, you know, different people's heights and you know how they're made, this is going to look different for a lot of people. So hop up and down a few times just in place and your feet naturally just kind of go into that hopping position, you know, the, mm -hmm. the hip width position, because yeah. that's where you're strongest. That's where you can like hop off the ground the strongest when your feet are under your hips, yeah. not if they're out wide, think about jumping from out wide yeah. or jumping from when your feet are like touching each other. <laughs> it's hard to do. So right. your body kind of naturally puts you in that hip width position. If you hop a few times in place. Yes. All right. You want to move on to the bench press? Let's do it. Okay. The bench press doesn't have as an elaborate of a description as the, as the, uh, squat and the uh, deadlift. It's the bro. It's the bro press. I'm I mean, who, the, the best thing about the bench press is you get to do it laying down. I mean, who, who wouldn't <laughs> like an exercise you can do while you're laying down, but basically we're in a laying position. We're moving a weight from a fully locked out position with straight arms above us to full elbow and shoulder flexion with the bar touching our chest and then back up again. That's, mm -hmm. you know, these, this works a lot of muscles, the triceps, the chest, the, sh the fronts of the shoulders, the sides of the shoulders. It's, it's almost a full body upper body exercise, save for the biceps and the back. So that's what the bench press is. All right. Biggest problem that we see are the elbow position elbows flared out to each side with the bar, just going in a straight power path up and down. Mm -hmm. The reason that this is a problem. So that angle can cause some pressure on the top of the shoulder and it's not really working the chest muscles that we're targeting when we do a bench press. Yeah. Can we do a little experiment before we move on? Sure. Since this is an audio visual experience, <laughs> just stand, stand upright, lift your elbows out to the side and then try to shrug up a little bit. That's not a very comfortable position. You probably feel a little bit of a pinch on yeah. the top of your shoulder. So imagine that when you're under a load and then trying to turn your hands out like you would in a bench press is almost impossible Forget position. It. So that's why we're going to fix your, your bench press. Yeah. All right. The fix, as you lift your barbell out of the rack, I want you to steady it overhead and stare through the bar and pick a point at the ceiling. That is now going to be your target. So each rep is going to start and end at this place. And then with your elbows about 45 degrees, meaning like 90 would be pointing straight out. 45 mm -hmm. would be halfway between that. And then, uh, what would you call that? Zero. Uh, zero would be pointing <laughs> right, right, right your towards your feet. So about 45 degrees is where we want those <laughs> elbows. We're going to bring the barbell down to the sternum or for ladies, I, I like to say like the bottom, like your bra strap area, um, and return it to that target we're staring at. That's going to create this like slight arc. We're going to have already fixed our elbows and that's going to create this slight arc in the bar path mm -hmm. versus trying to get the elbows out and do that straight up and down bar path right over the chest. Yeah. You're going to be able to lift more weight like this too, because you're going to be recruiting more of the muscles of the front of your shoulders than yeah. if you're just trying to jam this thing straight up and down. Yeah. And, and then a little tip I'll wasn't in the outline here, but a lot of guys that I coach, like if they're getting stuck on their bench press or it's getting heavy and it's getting really hard towards the middle of the mm -hmm. rep. If you think about pushing the bar back up to the position that it came in, like, like getting really getting that arc back into the lift on the way up and pushing it towards your head, you're going to feel more powerful and recruit those muscles of the shoulder. So in the descent, you're arcing down, but don't forget, don't just try to push the bar yeah. up when you're going back up return it in that same arc pattern. You're going to feel more powerful. And that's why having that spot on the ceiling is so helpful. Like if you just stare, you'll always be able to like return the bar to, to like your gaze yeah. and you won't like question, Hey, you know, where I'm, where I'm pushing it to. That's a great Having point. a target is just, you know, like gives you even, you know, gives you even more mental power to push toward that target. Yeah. No, you're right. 
All right, bonus. What bonus you got tip. for us? Okay, you're. Let's put yourself in my shoes. You're, you're getting set up for a bench press. You unrack the bar. You're feeling powerful. You go down for that first rep, and boom, on the right way back up, you clip the clips. Ah, you hit the clips. That's the, the bar. worst. Oh man, it's all cattywampus, and you feel like you're gonna drop it on your face and all that kind of <laughs> stuff. So the way we avoid that is when we lay down for the bench press, we roll the bar all the way to the front of the clips because sometimes they can mm -hmm. you know, creep back towards the back. And then we adjust our body position so that our eyes are just on the front side of the bar, meaning like towards your feet. That way when you, you still feel like you have good leverage, you're not like reaching back to unrack it or reaching forward. But when you unrack it, now you're going to be clear of the clips by probably like six inches and it mm -hmm. won't even be a problem at all. So let's talk about, this is a good opportunity to talk about spotters real quick. Okay, having a spotter for a bench press is a great idea, hands down, no matter what, but having that spotter help you unrack and re-rack is good if that's something that like bothers your shoulders mm -hmm. and you're going to set up in the wrong place. And the spotter's role is to what? Help you with those two things and then stay out of the yeah. way. They have no role in a, in a bench press <laughs> unless the bar starts going the wrong direction or the lifter says, Hey, help. If you're a spotter out there, one of the most common things we see from a spotter is leaning over into the face of the lifter <laughs> and like staring at them and, and they kind of block yeah. their path. So if you're spotting somebody, help them lift it out of the rack, step back, yeah. watching and making sure I'm like stepping back from the microphone, but step back, make sure that, you know, they're okay, but don't be like hovering over them. You got it. You got it. Plus you got like, <laughs> I mean, basically their crotch is in your face too. If they're hovering over you like and that their breath too. and all the things. <laughs> all right. Okay. Uh, was that it on that one? Let's see. What's the one common thing that we see that's missed? We already yeah. touched on this one a little bit, but I would say sloppy rack, unrack and re-racks. And yeah. that, that's, that's a no-go for my clients. So whenever we unrack the bar, we already touched on this part, but we want to like hover that bar for just a second yeah. out of the rack. So number one, we can get our uh, target. And number two, we're, we're starting from a good position. We're not starting from a wiggly bar path. If you try to like go into rep one from unracking it, right. you're, you have like all this forward momentum on the yeah. bar, which we don't want. Same thing is true on the re-rack. I see people doing a great set and then just basically like re throwing the bar into the rack for that last <laughs> rep. That was a total no rep. That last rep didn't count. Finish it overhead at your target. Then you can throw it into the rack safely, but right. don't, don't arch it back for that last rep. Get a full lockout before you re-rack that and re-rack <laughs> it with straight arms. Like there, what if you go to re-rack it with a bent arm and your elbow gives out and yeah, one and end doesn't even go into the rack? Yeah. Holy yeah. Smokes. Oh, that's a scary situation. But not only is this going to help you be safe, it's going to make you look like a pro if you're looking in the gym. <laughs> the people are going to know you know what you're doing when you have good yeah. unrack and re-rack. They're going to be like, obviously you do digital. Well, I got roll. another one coming for you in the press. So stay tuned. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's move on to the strict press. This is the last lift. Uh, Definition for a strict press is in a standing position, taking the bar from your collarbones to locked out fully overhead and returning back down. Strict. Strict. So this means <laughs> your legs stay flexed, your knees stay straight, your hips stay straight. There's no contribution of the lower body mm -hmm. in the strict Ooh. press unless you be cheating. <laughs> All right. Most common problem we see is too wide of a grip. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I think this is kind of like the, the back squat, like kind of just being like grabbing the bar and going, not really knowing where to grip the bar, which the uncoached is the uncoached press. <laughs> press. you know, and I think like if we're watching competition or we're watching like weightlifters or people doing CrossFit competitions, something like that, we can see a really wide grip in a press. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and this is for a reason they've this, they're not out there to, to, to just build some strength. They're out there to win this thing. So they're going to take a wide grip. So they have a shorter range of motion. So the proper grip allows us a more efficient press and to work the full range of motion, which we want to build strength in the full ranges of motion that we work to maximize the leverage. You know, there's like, when we do a press is press is one of the things where you can really like think about the levers yeah. of your body and like overcoming different levers to get this bar into position. So think about like, if you were going to like push a heavy, like someone was broken down and a bunch of you were going to push a car, yeah. you wouldn't take a really wide grip like this and try to push the car and you wouldn't put your hands like super close together and push the car. You'd be about right outside your shoulders yeah. <laughs> and try you to push your, this car. You want your arms to yeah, end like, up straight. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot of levers in the press too. Like, you know, Probably yeah. the most overlooked is what's going on with your wrist. When, mm -hmm. when you're holding the bar, like with your wrist flexed back, all that distance between the weight and your wrist 
joint is an extra lever that you have to yeah. overcome. And I think we're going to talk about where your elbow is too, but it's amazing. Like, and we've got to give starting strength credit for really teaching us how important leverage is and all these different and all lifts. these lifts. And yeah. The strict press, especially because it's most people's weakest lift. So you have to try really hard to take advantage of all the mechanical things you can to get the most out of it, you know, and well, lift the it, most weight. It, think about what it is. It should be your weakest lift. Yeah. So it's not a problem. That's yeah, yeah. lift, but that it can be stronger with, you know, a couple little fixes. All right. So give us the fix professor. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the fix of get to getting the right grip is to, you know, think about what the goal is overall. If we're going to try to get the best leverage, then we really want the we want our forearm to be vertical at the bottom of the lift because if our grip is in too narrow, now we've got an angle we've created with our forearm in that direction. And then if our grip is too wide, we've created another lever to overcome. By vertical, you're talking about your basically your elbow pointing toward the ground and your fist pointing straight up. Yeah, just my forearm vertical yeah. or perpendicular so not like to the your, ground. Like fist pointing towards your face and not your fist pointing out toward the person beside you. Right. So that's the goal based on your anthropometry is to end mm -hmm. up with that. But for most people, we find that's way narrower than they're just naturally going to go yeah. grip, especially if they've done things like cleans and things like that. Right. So for most ladies, it's going to mean that their index finger is actually inside of the area where the chunk of smooth part of the barbell in the middle meets up with the knurling, mm -hmm. maybe like a finger width inside of that. And then for most men, it's probably going to be just on the outside of where that smooth part meets the knurling. Yeah. And this could be a good, like two inches narrower than you're used to, but you'll feel more powerful if you try it. And especially if you work on getting your elbow and your wrist in a nice straight position, uh, when you have your width at the mm -hmm. right place too. It's kind of cool. Like if you've never really looked at your barbell, if you have a, a I guess they're all made like this. I don't know if you have a, a real legitimate barbell, you know, <laughs> look at how it's made. There's a smooth part in the middle and you know, that's where it's going to be placed on your back. So that helps you get it centered, you know, then there's going to be knurling mm -hmm. and then Cause that's going to be like where you're going to grip things for like presses or deadlifts or and sometimes little rings your back. and there's going to be like rings for like a snatch grip. Mm -hmm. Like this is, you know, so just it kind of gives you like an eyeball of like where you're commonly going to place your hands. And once you nail where the right place is for you through doing this exercise, mm -hmm. you'll never have to wonder again. You just yeah. naturally go up, get your grip and off you go. Yeah. I remember at starting strength, actually, like when we did an in-person thing there, I, they fixed my strict press grip for the first time and I was able to take it back and help people at my gym with yeah. this. But the, when he put my fingers inside the knurling and the smooth part, I was like, this is crazy feeling. It's so, <laughs> yeah. so, so narrow. And then once I started using that, I was like, okay, I feel it. I see why. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You want to move on to the bonus tip? All right. Bonus. Okay. Elbows. Think about your elbows. We're talking about overcoming leverages and all this thing. Elbows remain just slightly in front of the bar for your entire lift. That's from like when you set it up mm -hmm. throughout your set. So a common thing that we see is like people get the elbows set up on the first rep and then the elbows immediately slip behind mm -hmm. and then they stay back there. So if yeah. you just are standing there pretending like you're doing a press and you pull, pull your elbows back, like pointing back, Think about that lever that you have to the weight is hovering now the weight is, the weight is hovering and there's nowhere to set it on yeah. your shoulders and it's just like there's no it's like such a big lever to have to overcome so if you can keep those elbows in front and I often tell people who are struggling with this just literally concentrate on the elbows yeah. press it up make sure the elbows are coming down just in front and i'm not talking about out like a front rack like you're gonna do a squat or something i'm talking about like peeking inside right. in, you know, in the front of that um, barbell degrees. yeah so that's a bonus for you right there. I'm glad you brought that up because I think a lot of people will try to start this trick press from the front rack position with their elbows up high, their shoulders shrugged up and it's sitting up on their delts. That's well, me. you've just created, <laughs> you've created more bad leverage by having the, the, uh, yeah. weight way back behind your elbow. Now, now you basically have to do like a reverse curl as you press <laughs> the weight overhead too. Uh, but a lot of these things do take practice in like, not only practice in like getting the muscle memory, but also like your body's flexibility. So if you, if you try this and you're like, well, I don't have the flexibility for that. Keep trying it. Mm -hmm. Cause it's not only better for <laughs> the, the, the press that you're yeah. doing and the leverage, but your body will adapt and you will be able to like pull into that position. Yeah. You just got to kind of go through the motions, like holding some weight in that position, like letting your body feel it yeah. and not just don't give up. If it feels awkward that first time you try it. It's like my dudes that are like, man, I can't get in a position for these front squats. Like, what should I do? Like, well, we got to keep doing front squats because eventually <laughs> that position is going to get easier. Yeah. You're going to gain more really mobility does. by doing it. Okay. This is my favorite missed one. Of all these things? Of all these wow. things. This is the, one of statement. the most common things I correct people on, and it's my favorite one. Like, I'm like, dude, if you nail this, you look like a boss because I call it walk it in like a boss. <laughs> 
You, okay, this is what I'm picturing. This is what I see. You're doing a great, a great set of press, and then you like hold, you got 115 pounds on the bar, let's say, and then you're trying to hover it right here, and then you bend over you forward and you throw it into the rack, putting your back at compromise, and you're like not looking confident holding that weight like that. Yeah. Walk it in like a boss means you do your press set. And then you re-rack it, catch it with some bent knees like a boss, and march that sucker <laughs> in on the shoulders. Let your body carry that heavy weight in. Don't try to yeah. hover it out there in front of you looking like, oh my gosh, I'm going to drop it and I then thro it. throw it into the, into the, bar, into the rack. Yeah. You so like I call it walk it in like a boss. Like, yeah. make, let it land on your shoulders for that last rep. Pull those elbows forward and march that sucker in like you just completed this, your set. Walk it in like a boss and do All the right. floss. Anything else you want to get to today? Uh, I got a lot, but we should probably cut Holy it Holy smokes, you have quite the editing feat ahead of you. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this episode. This was a fun one to do and think about. Next time you go to the gym and one of these exercises pops up in your program, pick one, work on it. Let us know if you need any help. Send us a form check video through Instagram. We're happy to help there too. And uh, enjoy the rest of your day.